popular demand here on the Metal Voice 1982. Oh, we're gonna go back and see our revisit our top 10 albums from back in the day. Back to back where it all started. That's right. Where were you in 79 when the band began to break? Right, Saxon, right? <laughs> that's it. That's so it, that's it. we did a few uh, years, yeah. and everybody's, you know, we meet people, and, hey, what are you going to do in 82? What are you going to do the other years? So we're okay. So here we are. We're 1982. These are getting harder, these lists, Jim. Wait, I mean, we're getting we're right 83, into the, 84, 85. It's a big trouble. Big we're trouble. We're getting right into the that? heyday, right to the start here in North America. We can argue all day how it started in Europe or in England and yes. uh, New Wabba. And now it's coming here to North America and we're getting our feet wet. Back in 82, we're starting to see some momentum happening, Jim. So where are you going to start off with? Number 10 of 1982. Number 10, Creatures of the Night Kiss. An album at the time really didn't, didn't really do much with the exception of Love It Loud, right? Well, uh, War Machine. And War Machine, but... It, Jim Ballard, <laughs> Brian Adams, you, you, you Brian got, Adams, <laughs> Jim Ballard. You've you got to understand, at the time when this album was released... Eric Carr. Very low on the radar. Ace really is out of the bag, but people don't realize he's out oh, of the bag. pictures everywhere. <laughs> After the the great album that I like to call oh, The Elder. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. I see where you're Everything going. Everything went to hell. So Kiss goes, we're going to return to this hard rock and metal sound. I see where you're going with this, yeah. So then we're going to return back to the metal sound. And this was like their, their return, even though it didn't really make a... A dent. a dent on the no. Billboard charts, but over the years, the it has kids been. have all grown up by this point, right? The kids have all grown up. This and you were a pariah if you like yeah. Kiss at this stage. If you don't like Kiss yeah. at the time, you, you know what? You really wanted to hear "I Love It Loud." It was a pretty good song. Boom, 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 boom. It was just a great well, video. Okay, so for me, I you know I am not a huge Kiss fan. I admit it. What, what's Eric Carr's drumming on this album for you? To me, that that is that is, that is the song "Love It Loud." Uh, that I love it loud is is the bottom, behind the beat, big power drums. That is the song that defines Eric Carr in the album. That and of course, "War Machine" is just so many great tracks. A return to hard rock, heavy metal for Kiss, and it's it's the album that is very endeared and loved over the years. It wasn't loved at the time, but over the years, people have said, "Man, that's a damn good." Who plays guitar on it? Well, uh, Vinnie Vincent. <laughs> what the hell played guitar? Vinnie Vincent. I mean, you got. I mean, with the exception of the guitar solo, you know, like Bob Stanley does. We just call Bob Kulick whenever we need somebody. That's or, right. But uh, we won't credit him. Or, you know, that's we won't credit it. him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So that's number ten. Kiss Creatures of the Night. Okay. A well-respected hard rock metal album. I'll let you have that one. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Okay. YT. Well, you'll let me have this one. Then. Yes. Yt Black Tiger. Yeah. You know, they got some momentum going after years of years slugging the clubs over there in L.A. Uh, with Earth Shaker. Yeah. And now they came, went over, see our friend uh, Chris uh, Tangeridis, may you rest in peace. Yes. And does Black Tiger with some classics that are still played to this very day, like forever. And uh, you've got uh, Winds of Change right there. All right. That's all they had to release was just the song Winds of Change. That's all. But no, you get Barroom Boogie. Come hell or high water, uh, my way or the highway. I mean, Alan, this is a band that never truly got their respect. No, nope. they've always been cracking out the albums, cracking out the shows, but they never got that respect. Open fire. They opened for years with that song, yeah, and yeah. of course, uh, the very uh, syrupy and poppy. Don't wanna lose you. Don't want to break that. It's just, you know, a little bit of Don't want to lose you. I mean, that was Dave. And back at the time, what turned me slightly off about Y&T, which I have the utmost respect for today. I know, today, Summertime Girls. No, it was uh, <laughs> Dave. Dave summertime was getting a little frustrated. Girls. All these bands coming up, Motley Crue, etc. Yeah, yeah. We're opening for Y&T, and all of a sudden, Y&T finds themselves opening for yeah. these bands. They were a year before, we're opening for them. Yeah. And I remember reading a circus or hit parader at the time. Dave's like, we're the best band in L.A. We're the greatest. And I thought it was a little arrogance on his part. It's probably coming out of frustration. Now... We've interviewed Dave. Yes. A nicer guy you will never meet. No. I've witnessed them perform live uh, in, the, in recent years, and they are unbelievable. Like, like, towards the end of the 80s, they were known as the most underrated band that never made it. Yeah. Right? Because they never achieved the level of success of many of their peers. 
uh, unfortunately. And now I go back and I revisit all those albums, and and Dave to this day is still one of the greatest guitar players to yeah, come from yeah. that era, and nobody ever talks about him. Yeah. So not only he's got a great voice, he's an unbelievable. So winds of change. There you go. And forever, those are the two for me, and a great album cover. Let's wrap it up there, Alan. We're going to do this list forever. <laughs> number nine. No, number eight. You have problems a with that. A little bit of a game. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, Triumph. Yeah, never, never surrender. surrender. Well, not one of the, not their strongest album in the catalog for me, but classic songs on there. You know? When hate the it. lights go yeah. down. Never surrender. Uh, World of Fantasy, Never Surrender, yeah. and they, they got great lyrics. And that's when I, this album that I really appreciated Gil Moore as a vocalist with songs like Battle Cry. He's really falling to his own. Um, you know, and uh, so they got some show, the songs on there that they played uh, for years. Yeah. And they're still classics to their to this day. And, and the lyrics is like Writing on the Wall or Too Much Thinking, which was the Reagan era uh, about nuclear war. The threat of nuclear war, you got to put yourself back in the day. This yeah. was a real threat with the Cold War be, uh, between Reagan and uh, G G Gorbachev, Gorbachev, I think, at that time. Gorbachev. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, they really nailed it. Lyrically, uh, you know, what I like about Triumph is they always have uplifting lyrics. They're always positive, you know, fight the good fight. Yeah. And, and this one, they really Canadian tackled... Canadian power trio. They tackled some of the issues of the day. So it's interesting to listen to uh, years and decades later. So. And, you know, they're coming out with a documentary. Banger Film is doing a documentary. Fantastic. Let's try why, 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 Sign me up. Give us a call. I talk to <laughs> hours. Us a call. I can talk days about Triumph. Triumph. Well-deserved. Just like Wine there you Well-deserved. Canadians finally... Hey, by the way, they just got into the uh, rock and roll... Something or another. Something here in Canada. So all right. Not right, the right. Hall of Fame. They're already okay, in the Hall of Fame. That's it. Are they? I don't know. Anyways. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Number seven. You know, here's a bad... Okay, that's I'll let you like, talk about it. It's that. a lot of hit and miss. Hey, Stiff Rod. Rod. Pay attention, Stiff Rod. <laughs> Bring out your striper, Stiff Rod, because it's Venom Black Metal. <laughs> black metal! Black metal! Look, here, here's a band that hit and miss on a lot of albums. The first three albums are monumental. But this Gross. album, this album sort of redefined, you know, uh, we'll call it aggressive metal and death metal and black metal. So it sort of redefined a whole genre, so it's well deserved to have, especially the song, it, just the words black metal is sort of the, the sort of the, the beginning of it all, we right? About that, so you can't, you can't dis discard them. You have to say that these guys are well-deserved in the 1982. Here, here's my impression of black metal. <laughs> the production, <laughs> Boy, well, that's production that's right. is like the worst ever. No, just I, listen, I just say listen, the worst. Just listen to the production. It's like, turn that off. <laughs> turn that off. I introduced the, the band by uh, my great friend, our great friend, Stiff Rock. Stiff Rock. So uh, stiff back rock. in the day, uh, yeah, I could uh, just no, lift a needle, put that over there. That's but, right. but love him or hate him, they spawned, spawned. thousands of other bands very soon. <laughs> Apparently, true. with bad production. Many, many people <laughs> liked it a lot more than I did. Okay, there, there go, we there go. go. There Let's leave go. it at that. All right, so number, number seven. Number, no, we, no, we oh, did seven. Eight. We're number, hey, I got your number six, Vandenberg. Vandenberg. Yeah. Vandenberg. Yeah, thanks for letting me put that one on. No problem. The uh, first album. It's very scientific, by the way. The, uh, the yes, yeah, very scientific. Thanks for letting me put it on. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, you know, the uh, European Van Halen, as far as I'm concerned. You got a great guitar player, great drummer. Uh, the vocalist is uh, not quite as charismatic as Mr. Uh, Roth, but uh, great songs from start to finish. Plus yes. the great ballad, Burning Heart. Yeah. Uh, their yeah. strongest album, by far. By far. Yeah. Um, uh, the other ones were much too commercial for me. I, I barely gave them a listen, uh, Heading Toward the Storm and uh, Alibi. Uh, but this album, I actually own it twice on vinyl. Ooh. This is one of the few that I actually own twice. Uh, I was scared of wearing the grooves out on the first one, so I bought a second copy. Just in case. Yeah, that's how much I like this album. And thanks to my good friend Mark, who bought it just based on that great logo on the front cover. Yeah, that's true. That's the only reason he bought it. In fact, that's the only reason he bought Black Tiger, too, because he loves the album cover. He loves the album covers, that guy. Anyways, he introduced us, and uh, great, great album I listen to to this day. Uh, it's one of the top ten that if I was stuck on an island somewhere, I'd need that with me. Yeah, it's a good, good, good choice, Alan. Number five, our buddies. Anvil, metal <laughs> on metal. Da -da -da -da. They were actually, you know what the da -da -da -da. sound is? You know that, 
you think it, 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 they actually took a manhole cover uh-huh. and with a, with a hammer we're hitting the manhole cover that's yeah, what yeah. that sound is good old lips good old anvil lips. guys anvil wait anvil. there's another show we're talking about anvil but rightly so a lot of people think that their the genre career, defining their career genre began defining. and ended with this album wrong Right, I mean, they're still, they're still got a new album coming out. We got to interview yeah, them yeah, by yeah. that. That's it. The, the, the it. name has not been released. Still top secret. But they told us the we name. know what it is, and we're look, look, ceiling throwing the key away. We know what the label. Uh, and it's it's the metal on metal, Jim. For me, my friend uh, Craig yeah. says you got to listen to this, yeah. and it's like okay. Then you got Madra. Madra. Talking about speed metal. Yeah. This is the base. You were talking about Venom. How many people were influenced by this out? And you Lars, know, you know, Lars, the, you know the first the song that I like the best off this is actually a song called "Stop Me." Stop, yeah. A uh, scenery, song. sorry, scenery. scenery, scenery. Me too. Uh, it's scenery not, with it's the drums da da da, and then then, then Rob scenery. keeps the bass going. The bass, da da da. Yeah, Rob Reiner. Uh, Rob, 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 Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner. That Rob album is like insane. That's all we have to say. What else? Yeah. It's been, everything you need to know about this album has been said and done ever since the uh, DVD came out. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was a genre changing genre for changing. lots of people. Yeah, yeah. And here we go. And, and you think about it, 1982. This is like before Metallica, right? This before Metallica. This is before 80, the yeah. Exciters and the Metallicas and all yeah. that speed metal. This was sort of you had new wave of British heavy metal. You had Anvil, and then you had speed. But and don't Rush. forget, they, this They're is like their the second middle. album. That's hard and heavy, heavy and hard out. and heavy. That's right. Hard and heavy le- leans with you know the genre cover painted defining. black, more towards the hard rock. They were developing their sound. It yeah. was leaning more towards the uh, the heavy heavy stuff, which was un you know un- it's unknown it's, here yeah. in, in yeah. North America. Yeah, yeah. And then metal and metal was right, and even Lips was saying, well, I don't want to do a spoiler alert here, but Lips was saying, hey, they were opening for Iron Maiden. They go, we got a song called Six Six Six. Well, what was oh that? yes, what was yes, Maiden? Yes. What was Maiden making around that album? The, the number of the, the beast. beast. So yeah, it got overshadowed. Right, so it just goes shows how there's a synchronicity, how people it was starting to come together, right? Yeah, All yeah. these influences out of the '70s and punk rock it was formed this new thing, and yeah. Anvil, Canada's own Anvil, was there at the forefront. Front. But it's a shame because usually the guys at the four forefront usually get less credit than the guys right after, right? Sort of like the maidens. So because they were so ahead of their time, you know, they usually say people ahead it of their time, it's never get that as much success. But back then, Anvil was pretty big. I saw them in, open up for Maiden. People were going wild. They won they over that for, crowd. They opened for Aerosmith. They won over the crowd. A they were like dates on was... fire. And I mean, I, they converted so many Maiden fans that night. And it was, it was truly, they're still a great band. And back then when they were a great band, they've always been a great they're band. They're still playing on a good show. All right, number four. All right, Alan, here we go. Number four, you ready for this? All right, here we go. Number four. Except? Restless and Wild. Restless and Wild. Game changer, Jim. Game changer. Um, hi, knee, hi, no, hi, na, na, na. Scream, <laughs> double bass drum, speed metal. There you go. There we go. And you know you got the neon knights, neon, neon knights. knights, neon knights, and the princess, 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 princess of the dawn. Okay, princess. but then you got some leftovers from the earlier. For me, like Flash Rocking Man, Flash Rocking Man, Don't Go Stealing My Soul Away leads more to the previous stuff. Yeah. Whereas uh, you know, Restless and Wild. Uh, what else we got here? Dita, Dita produced it. Uh, a little ahead more. of the pack. I would say this is more of their a little more of a raw sounding album compared to like the newer. Or the uh, you know the the newer album, right? the we talk- ra- but it fit in well. This Ross. Shake your heads. I mean, that's what they're talking about, right? And, you know, denim and leather. Saxon was talking about the crowds outside, yeah, yeah. and these guys talk. Shake your heads. What they're seeing, and they were part of that movement as well. Prince or soft dog. You know, yeah, great, great. Udo's voice was a uh, you know started. A screamer that's on this one. A that's screamer. A, it was a it was a great album and the game changer. Like game changer. Said. Game changer. We we. we I, I bought that album first out of our gang. We, I mean, we were religiously going out, six or seven of us buying four or five albums a, a, a week, right? One, one it's quarter it. a week. It, it that, I put that on and people were like, what the hell is that, right? And then, then everybody became known as the Heidi Heido album, right? Oh, yeah. Who guys, Heidi <laughs> Heido guys? And, and I mean, by the time, you know, that year was over, you know, 100 people knew that album. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so catchy. So there we go. Yeah. Great yeah. album. Yeah. Our buddies had accept. All right, Al, number three. I mean, to me, this is we're another... Right, number three already. We're wow. number three. This, this is, to me, this is a career-defining album by the Scorpions. I'm going to cheat. Blackout! 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 Blackout. For me, I, I, you, you know, know I, I know your thoughts on this. No one but like you. No one like you. 
this is when they hit American, North American mainstream. They hit even it hard. Global, they hit it hard. They're building. They're building, right? They, 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 they got on to uh, MCA, kind of you there. know? Yeah. Mercury. And they started, and they're, they're the animal magnetism, the zoo. Okay, the zoo. oh yeah, we got some radio play there, and now we got the black. Yeah. I, you know what? People forget this. Uh, Don Dawkins was almost a singer. That's right. right. So because there was a uh, Klaus, yeah, yeah, Klaus, Klaus Miney, rhymes with money, uh, has the vocal, the old famous vocal notes that uh, Michael Starr. Yeah. Pretty sexy Michael Starr, Bill yeah. Panther just spoke about. Vocal notes, didn't know if he was going to be out. Yeah, he had, like a, Don Dawkin. he had like a dog collar and he was getting zapped. He didn't even just, know if he was yeah. going to be able to... Uh, so Don Dawkin, and I mean, I always wanted to ask all the Don basic Dawkin, tracks. where are these tracks? Let's hear these tracks. They use them for Don backing Dawkin. vocals. I asked, we asked Matthias about this, eh, Matthias Jabs? Yeah. We go, where are these tracks? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where these Don Dawkins are. Klaus is back and we're happy, so we'll put it so, away. So, so, so. But anyways, Thank you. Jim, you know, for me, I bought that album the same time as... And I'm going to cheat here. I'm sneaking in another one. Coney Hatch, debut album. Coney Hatch, 1982. Scorpions, Scorpions Black Coney I mean, Okay, I know what you... Bought them both I, at the same I time. Know, let's forget about Coney Hatch. I know you don't like this album because it's repetition. <laughs> I'm dynamite. Give me all I need. You're dynamite. <laughs> He's dynamite. They're dynamite. Can't live, can't live without you. Can't live. Can't live without you. But despite China the repetition, White, China, China White was out there. That's, that's kind of like the we zoo. We know what that's about. From the zoo. But when the walls me, came falling, that was the last song. <laughs> smoke. When the smoke. When the smoke. When the smoke. <laughs> The smoke is going down. I can't remember. Anyway, great closer. Great closer. We don't know what it's called, but great closer. <laughs> Bottom line is for me, this is the, my favorite Scorpions album because this is their metal album. This I is their hard rocking, pounding metal. This is and this one. was an explosion. And right from the friggin' from yeah. the, the ah, forks and the with eyes the, the, to the glass breaking, this is everything. It sets the tone for the whole album. And to me, this was Blackout. the and it still is my favorite album. Blackout. Really? I really had a blackout. It's the one that got their I had the really North blackout. American yes. door jam. All right, here we go. Number two. Oh, Number two. Oh, we're this getting is like to a no heavy brainer. duties. This is like a no heavy brainer. duty here. No brainer. Judas Priest. Scream of Vengeance. Scream! Yeah, Scream for Vengeance. Wow. Yeah. You know what? This was my introduction to Judas Priest, yeah. 1982. We went back, we bought the Defenders of Faith, and you know, like we did, then we went and bought, bought the back catalog, right? Yeah, yeah. If Martin Popoff, if you were a true Judas Priest fan with Martin Popoff, like him, this is where they turned off and said, I'm not listening to Judas Priest anymore. Yeah. We were introduced to Judas Priest in this album, <laughs> saying, oh my gosh, greatest album of all time. This is unbelievable. Right? From yeah. the song. Devil's Child. Oh my God. Riding the Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Riding on the wind. It's not my favorite Judas Priest album. That would be the one after. But this, this is, is again, a monumental You're album. talking about a game changer here in North America. Yeah. You could not go anywhere without hearing, you've got another thing coming. Which was... We need another song. One of those famous. We need another song. Well, I got yeah. this thing that goes down, 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 chicky, 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 chicky. right? And, 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 and look it, at it. See, off the charts. Strange off enough, charts. that was so. Un, like, I, it didn't fit on the album in a sense, right? Because the rest of the album was sort of more. Harder, Devil's Child. Right? But it's it's a great you song. You bring me pain, but you give me pleasure, right? Great album, monumental, probably one oh. of their biggest albums today, oh. most loved albums today. Beautiful album cover, The Hellion. The Hellion. So, I, 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 and, and I gotta say, that is the best. Like, there's a lot of intros out there oh. to songs, right? That is to Electric Eye. That is Electric the guy. best. The Hellion Electric going into Electra is the best intro moving into the song. It just sets the whole mood, and that is probably you know just a, a phenomenal song. You're you listening to Electric Eye, and, and he, it's got that Aussie. He starts the, da, 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 with the vocals, oh, yeah. like a machine gun. You're like, what? And he's singing high. And you're like, what? Who? Oh, who is this? What is this? It's blowing your mind. Yeah, yeah. There you go, boys and girls. 82. Introduction to Judas Priest for most of North America, thanks to You've Got Another Thing Coming. And unfortunately, a lot of the more Judas Priest traditionalists might, yeah. have, might have switched off. Like Martin might have switched off. They were very disappointed with Point of Entry, and they weren't impressed with this comeback. So there you go. It might have been the, the breaker for Judas Priest, which we're saying, number two, yeah. album of the year. 
or it might have been that's the last nail in the coffin for Judas Priest. That's right. That started with British Steel and ended with uh, Screaming for Vengeance. Let's so. do this, Alan. This is number one. No, here, without, you know, this is without no a doubt. Big without surprise. Alan, you can't. No you cannot big put this as number one. <laughs> Iron Maiden, the number of the beast. Can it? Oh. Dis like right yes, off, riding the riding, you know, killers is, yeah. is going up there, building up that the ground swell. Bruce Dickinson, the Human Air Raid Sirens' yes. first album. Yeah, yeah, it's with the boys. With the exception Clive of Clive Burr, Burr. <laughs> Clive Burr is still playing. Yeah, he's still with the guys, playing those unbelievable beats on Run to the Hills. Is that is that Vincent Price? Wait a second, that's a clone. No, that's a but, clone. but whoa, whoa to you. I've Everything. Ch for me, Children of the Dam was, oh. was an early high, highlight. And, and they said that it's supposed to be similar to Children of the oh. Sea. That's kind of weird. Children of the Dam. What? You've got the Prisoner. The Prisoner, yeah. They brought back an old... I'm a free man! An old Adrian <laughs> Smith song right. from his previous band in 22 Acacia Avenue. Yes. Charlotte the Harlot. Tell him my name. You might even get it for free. No. And then, uh, of course, run to the course, hills. Run, run to, the, to the hills, which played that a whole staple. summer. A whole a staple was uh, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that song. I, and it's funny because Judas <laughs> Priest was <laughs> they had that brief <laughs> moment <laughs> when <laughs> Sabbath kind of you know in Zeppelin because of the death and and then Judas Priest started coming up and then the Maiden quickly surpassed them. They had a very short time at the top, Judas Priest, because yeah, yeah. Maiden came along with this, and then then it was Maiden for the rest of the 80s. Yeah, it was, it was just Unbelievable. It was, and you know what, 15 million albums sold worldwide, probably yeah. even more than this that. Was, this was this was broke in every country. It wasn't just North America, it was like global. This was like on a global scale. You know, like you said, you saw them do this tour. It was a more smaller sheds. Yeah. And then this album allowed them to do peace of mind at the bigger arenas, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. they were a true headliner by then. Yeah, four albums in. Yeah, but this is the one that broke them in North America. Yeah. First one with uh, Bruce, and like I said, this is the one I'm. You know, we were guys that went down. Okay, uh, you buy that one, I'll kind of tape it from you. You know, <laughs> you know, we're not supposed to do that, but right there. And then, uh, but this made it, everybody wanted to make it. Yeah, everybody wanted There was nobody, hard. you weren't taping this or borrowing a copy from your friend. Yeah. This was, I, but I, that's my copy, I own that. It's that's the artwork. Much of a, it's the friggin' artwork. Eddie, 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 Eddie was a big part of that. Eddie was a big part of that. There you have it, top 10 metal albums of 1982. Stay tuned for 1983.